But we're excited to bring on Nate Bahar. Maybe he's got some take on where the CFL is going. Played with the Edmonton Eskimos 2017-2018. First round draft choice. Spent 2019 with the Ottawa Red Blacks. He's a London, Ontario kid. And he joins us now. We're going to talk about his new startup and a lot of things. How you doing, Nate? I am very well. Thank you. How you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. I got to clear something up first. I was on the 13th Man podcast in Ottawa last night. Those guys do a great job, Frankie and Shane. Great dudes. And they said that they thought your playing days were done and you were becoming an entrepreneur, businessman, and you're done playing. I'm like, I don't think so. He's only 26. What's your CFL future right now? Absolutely. I, uh, I'm, I'm not done. I got, I got some... I got some juice left in these legs, that's for sure. Um, and I got a whole lot of a lot of hunger left in me. I, I have not been my best product on the football field, especially at this level, this professional level. And I I'm excited for the for the opportunity in 2021. Well, sure to play, and I think it's going to meld great with your new company, Autonomy. Am I saying that right? You got it. That's it. Autonomy Marketing. So I saw it obviously on uh, Twitter. I retweeted it. And I just think it's awesome, but maybe a lot of our viewers don't know what it is. I think the sports world, particularly in this country, been waiting for something like this. Can you explain it? Absolutely. So we're super excited to be rolling out Autonomy Marketing. Um, it's an influencer marketing platform for pro athletes, amateur athletes, everybody in between, um, your Olympians especially, and of course, anybody in the fitness, health, and wellness industry. What we do is we allow brands, so your businesses from, you know, uh, a sportswear company, a nutrition company, supplements, anything, anything of that ilk uh, to find and engage with athletes and say, hey, look, we want to work together. We want you to you know, post about us on your social media and we're going to pay you X amount of dollars to do it. And we're really just the meeting place or the marketplace um, for these relationships to happen. And you know, brands out there, everybody, everybody wants athletes to market for them. It's just there's, there's this weird disconnect that like, who do I talk to? Do I have to call an agent or do I have to call a manager? Do I have to call a team or a communications head? Where do I find an athlete? And athletes just don't really know where to go to find the brands as well. I mean, just Instagram or Twitter DMing sometimes doesn't feel professional. doesn't feel like the right place to create these long-lasting relationships. So we wanted to just fix this problem on both sides and, and help athletes in Canada monetize the brand and the influence, especially that they have, because they really do have that influence. Yeah. So, it, I mean, very simply, you got athletes here and businesses here and Nobody knew how to bring them together, <laughs> and you did it very easily. Um, but one thing, I mean, we know a little bit about startups around here. You find out very quickly who your competition is or who is in that space. Was there anybody else doing this that you didn't know about? Could, I didn't, but doesn't mean they don't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's two main ones down south, sorry, across, across the border to the south um, that operate in a similar space. Um, the way that they operate and the way that they, they go about solving the problem isn't the same. Um, and they mainly target, you know, the, the LeBron James, the Odell Beckham, you know, Michael Phelps, that sort of 1% of athletes. I mean, the 1% of the 1% of athletes. Um, and it's more just for helping brands curate the relationships they already have. So if you're a Nike athlete, Open Doors, for example, um, allows Nike to send you content the day you, the day you have to post it and say, Hey, Odell, make sure this gets posted at 6 p.m. Here's your caption. Here's the post. All right, go on with your life. What we're trying to do is actually, you know, facilitate growth and partnerships for athletes that may be, you know, the bottom, the bottom percent of their, of their agents client list that just don't have deals being brought to them. And we want them to be able to come somewhere and find these deals organically themselves um, should they want to and give them that opportunity to go out and source their own deals. And from there, they create their own content. They work with the brands. They negotiate. They go back and forth and do all these things that are part of the deals process and, and get paid um, likewise for it, you know, without people taking huge chunks off the top of their hard-earned work. Of course. And for anybody that doesn't really understand what we're talking about right now, Nate, you can appreciate this. Let's just say this Sunday, week 11 in the NFL, watch the ads and see how many players are in the ads. That's exactly what we're yes. talking about right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the without getting too technical, the in 2018 is the last year I have data for, but 65.8 billion dollars US dollars was spent worldwide on athlete sponsorships. And it's gone up every single year for as long as they've kept that data. So it, it usually tracks up a, a few billion dollars a year. So it's probably safe to say we're well over 70 billion in 2020. Um, and that's just athletes. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Yeah, and why can't CFL players have a portion of that? Or uh, you mentioned Olympic yeah. athletes. My God, you, know, yeah. you saw all the news. I did see this on SportsCenter. Katrina LeMaydon, good friend of ours, named the chef the mission for Canada for the 2022 Beijing Games, Winter Games. Well, I know Katrina. She couldn't even pay for her rent in Calgary when she was winning gold medals. Like, it is a crime that people don't mm-hmm. really know about. And, and, and why wouldn't you want somebody like that to be <laughs> an influencer for your company, right? It just mm-hmm. it, was nobody thinking about that 20 years ago. So, anyways, I get it. I want to talk about a couple other things. I mentioned being on that podcast last night, the 13th Man Podcast in Ottawa. These dudes love the Red Blacks. And they feel that the Red Blacks just don't get enough coverage out there, Nate. And what I love about guys like you is you're from the East, you played in the West, you went back to the East, you have this national view of the CFL. How do you feel about playing in Ottawa in terms of the profile of the team and individual athletes compared to the other teams in town and Mm -hmm. for Edmonton pro athletes? Yeah, I think... um... I think Ottawa is a is a good sports town in terms of you know viewership and how they've curated the experience around Lansdowne and, and things like that and that people really do enjoy going to the games and they're well attended. Um, I think where it would differ from a place like Edmonton is a, is a perfect example is sort of the the knowledge the background knowledge that fans would have of each player. Like I think about you know I played with Duke Williams and Darrell Walker and Brandon Zilstra, uh, Vidal Hayes, all these guys, but they were known in Edmonton because people knew about their past. And because of that, they had even more respect. And that's not fair. I mean, people should be respecting CFL athletes regardless because some of the best athletes on earth. Um, But I feel like in Ottawa, a lot of times people don't know the backstory of these players. It's just like, oh, these are just the guys that are in the community. Uh, Great guys. Yeah, sure. We'd love to have a beer with them at local after a game or something like that. But perfect example I always use is I played how many weeks with Jonathan Newsom, who was incredible now he's with BC and, then a few weeks after the season, I didn't realize I saw a highlight tape of him sacking Peyton Manning. <laughs> it was her, it was Peyton, yeah. it was, it was Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck. And I was like, no one would have even known that in Ottawa because it's just not really the same culture of understanding of, you know, putting that respect to the, to the players' names. And like I said before, everybody should respect CFL players. I mean, they are, they are some of the best athletes on earth. But knowing sort of where they've come from, it, it, it brings a lot more to it. You know, when you have that pedigree and people understand that pedigree, but that it's behind it, it's, uh, it changes things real quick. Yeah, I don't know how you change that. I remember when News- Newsom showed up here in Saskatchewan, we clicked real early, just personally. And I mm-hmm. saw that he had led the NFL in sacks by a rookie <laughs> in, uh, in India. I think it was in 2012, or maybe it was later than that, but... That guy's a stud. But you're right. If you don't have that culture in your market, I don't know how you go about doing it. Mm -hmm. But um, let me ask you this. Speaking on behalf of CFL players, if you don't mind doing so, what's your thoughts on 2021? What's your take? What are the guys saying? Um, I think, you know, there's some people... Maybe a little little disheartened, I think, is probably the right right way to say it. Um, I think... The majority of guys want to be playing again. Like they're they're itching. They're just you know they're chomping the bit to, to get out there and hit somebody and, and run around and hear a crowd roar. I think it's just difficult the way that everything unfolded. I think the um, a bit of the lack of transparency and and this is I do not say this at all to say or to rag on on the league or how things were handled because a global pandemic is pretty hard to plan for. Um, but I, I do think that it kind of you know it, it weighed it weighs on people um, how we how we found out about things through Twitter and stuff like that as, I, as I've touched on in the past and I think 2021 we're optimistic for I think at this point there's enough of a roadmap um, outlined by leagues across North America across the across the world really um, on how you can return to play um, obviously every every league's business model is different but you look at a sim- like a small league like the CEBL even and how Mike Morial did an incredible job of getting their um, their summer tournament, everything up, going, no cases, and everybody was out happy and happy and smiling. So there's definitely enough of a blueprint. I think that it'd be we'd be very disappointed if if things didn't come to fruition. But I just want to play, and I think that we should. And there's <laughs> disappointment would be the, the number one thing that that didn't happen. Yeah, disappointment and, and disheartening was the term that you used. And can you just say this? Look, I said you're 26. You must be thinking, I'm not getting any younger. Like you don't want to lose a year, right? Yeah, I mean that's 
that's just it. It was, it was crazy. When I went back home at the start of quarantine, I went back to London and hung out with the family and I was working out with my, working out with my brother and stuff. And, and I was like, I, I've never felt this good. I was like, we were, I was in two days or three months, you know, I'm 25. I feel like I'm sort of hitting the prime that they talk about and all this stuff and squatting a bunch of weight, the joints and knees and ankle, everything's feeling good. And it's like, wow, that really sucks. <laughs> my season at 26, you're supposed to be hitting your stride is like, there he does. It's just gone. It's lit up in the smoke. So a, a second one would be, would be tragic. I feel it for those rookies, man. I could, like all the excitement of going to draft and then just to not even get to not even, you don't even get to go get beat up in camp. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even get yeah. to earn your stripes or, you know, learn what you don't know. It's uh, it's tough. I feel for them. Yeah. I think you really nailed a lot of it here. Like one year, brutal Two. The term you used was tragic, like, and I don't, like, I get it, man. I know in sports terms, tragic, it, it would be. Nate, uh, listen, we'll let you go. We'll tell our viewers to follow you on uh, on social media for the latest on autonomy. And I always appreciate the time, sir. Stay safe out there and, and keep in touch. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. Nate Bahar. I'll say of the Ottawa Red Blacks, I know that his, uh, well, I believe the last time he was on, he said his contract status is as a free agent. But I, you're going to be hearing a lot from this guy, whether it's CFL or otherwise. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.